a smartphone with a Snapdragon 730G SoC at 17,000 rupees, an all screen front and near stock Android. Now this sounds apt for a budget Google Pixel smartphone, but surprisingly, it's Motorola that has delivered exactly this with the One Fusion Plus. Now stay with me right till the end of this video to find out more. Before I go ahead with the full review of this Motorola One Fusion Plus, be sure to subscribe to the Gadget 360 YouTube channel and click that bell icon so that you're the first to know when you have a new video. The Motorola One Fusion Plus is one of the very few new phones with a pop-up selfie camera. Due to this, you get an uninterrupted view of the 6.5 inch display. Remember that there is no protective glass and Motorola only says that it has used an anti-fingerprint and an anti-scratch coating, so you'll need to be very careful. The display is really crisp and has good brightness and viewing angles, along with HDR10 support. This single speaker is loud enough to fill a small room and adds to the video watching experience. I could also hear the phone ringing from an adjacent room easily. This phone also has the motor display feature which prevents the phone from going into standby while you are looking at the screen. Another nice feature, peak display, lets you interact with notifications while the screen is locked and in a way makes up for a missing notification LED. While the display is good, I found the Motorola One Fusion Plus to be a little chunky as it is 9.6mm in thickness and weighs about 210 grams. Motorola has thankfully curved the side of this device which makes it somewhat comfortable to hold. The rear mounted fingerprint scanner is quick to unlock the smartphone. Since Google has removed face recognition from Android 10, the Motorola One Fusion Plus does not have this feature. I didn't miss it too much as the pop-up camera is a little slow to rise. What I like most about the Motorola One Fusion Plus is the fact that it runs near stock Android 10 with a few useful features that are added. I've already told you about peak display and moto display and it has the same moto action gestures that fans love using. You could do a double chop like a ninja to turn on the flashlight or a double crank to launch the camera. There are many more gestures here which I'm sure you'll discover if you use the smartphone. Using the Motorola One Fusion Plus felt a lot like using a Google Pixel device and I prefer the clean approach to Android over a custom skin. During my time using this device for this review, I did not receive a single spammy notification. Other manufacturers, take note. The Motorola One Fusion Plus is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G processor with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. I did not notice any lag or stutter while using it and could multitask very easily. There's enough grunt to handle day-to-day -day duties as well as gaming. PUBG Mobile defaulted to the high presets with graphics set to HD and frame rate set to high. I played this game at these settings without any issues for 20 minutes after which the smartphone was barely warm to the touch. The Motorola One Fusion Plus easily lasted me over a day and a half before needing to be plugged in for charging. It managed to go on for 15 hours and 45 minutes in our HD video loop test. Charging via the 18W turbo charger is relatively quick but we have seen even faster charging from the competition. The phone got up to 32% in 30 minutes and took a little over 2 hours to charge completely. I'm going to talk about all the cameras on the Motorola One Fusion Plus but before I do that I want to say that I was really impressed with the night mode performance on this particular device. You have to see the photos to believe the results. I am going to talk about the camera hardware first and then tell you how this particular smartphone performed. The phone has a 64 megapixel primary sensor, a wide angle camera, a 5 megapixel macro camera and a depth sensor. In daylight, it managed good shots with ample detail. Even objects at a distance had decent detail and text was legible. Close-ups turned out quite well too. The primary camera adds a natural depth effect to the background, which looks nice. I found the ultra wide angle camera to be good for shooting landscapes. You will see a watercolor-like effect on zooming in into these wide angle shots. The macro camera lets you go closer to the subject and manages decent details. However, it is restricted to 5 megapixels in resolution. In portrait mode, edge detection is good and the background is blurred properly. Low light camera performance is average and the Motorola One Fusion Plus misses out on details in the shadows. The output appears slightly grainy on zooming in. Switching on night mode eliminates most of these issues instantly. I had to hold the phone steady for slightly longer but the output with night mode was a lot brighter and had improved details in the shadows as well. Just notice how dramatic the improvements are in both of these samples. There's a 16 megapixel pop-up selfie camera on this device. 
selfies had good details and when I used the portrait mode, the edge detection was decent. In low light, the quality dips, but the selfie camera also supports night mode, which helps to some extent. Video recording maxes out at 4K for the primary camera, while the selfie shooter is limited to 1080p. In daylight, the Motorola One Fusion Plus manages to stabilize footage very well at 1080p while doing a decent job at 4K. However, stabilization does not work as well in low light, resulting in a shimmer effect in the output. The highlight of the Motorola One Fusion Plus is its clean, bloatware-free, near-stock Android software, which provides an excellent user experience. Moto actions are thoughtful and add usable functionality. The display lacks a faster refresh rate but is bright and has good viewing angles. The loud bottom firing speaker enhances the video watching experience. It's been a while since I enjoyed testing a budget smartphone as much as I did with the Motorola One Fusion Plus. I hope Motorola keeps the software up to date which gives this device an edge over the competition. That said, the company has got the specifications and the price right this time. And well, it kind of makes it very easy for me to recommend this smartphone for anyone who's looking at a device under 20,000 rupees. And that was my review of the Motorola One Fusion Plus. Now, what do you think about this smartphone? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, for all things tech, stay tuned to Gadget360.com.